Welcome to module 10 of our management accounting class. This module is all about capital budgeting. Now, capital budgeting really belongs to corporate finance more than management accounting. We usually do one small module just introducing you to concepts and topics, but if you want to understand this with a lot more depth, a corporate finance class will be the class, uh, course for you. Uh, Having said that, it's important to understand it because it's useful financial information with which managers make decisions. The big difference between capital budgeting and what we learned in our other management accounting classes is the length of time. Most management accounting decisions are built on short-term thinking, you know, one year, maybe two years. This is multi-year thinking, so multi-year that the time value of money becomes a major factor. So if I'm making a decision that's going to project, you know, some cash flows in 10 years from now, well, a dollar I make in 10 years is not worth the same as a dollar I make today, right? The future money is worth less than today's money. And so we have to get into some more complicated math to solve these capital budgeting problems. Now that said, we keep it fairly straightforward in our management accounting class, but if you want to move up the ladder and you enjoy this stuff, please consider taking a proper corporate finance class. Sorry for that preamble. Let's jump into it. We're really going to use and learn three t key tools in this chapter. We're going to learn to compute something called the payback period, which is one of the simplest calculations we can make. Then net present value, which if you take a corporate finance class, net present value will be the star of the show. And last but not least, we'll compute internal rate of return, also a very important calculation. But let's get into it with an example where we compute all three, and I can kind of explain all three by using the example. Well, hopefully. Here we go. Bob, the owner operator of Bob's Lawn Care, is debating buying a new piece of equipment for $50,000 cash. So this is very typical. Uh, corporate finance problem. We're thinking of buying a new piece of equipment and it's gonna, we're gonna use it for years and years. Should we buy it or not? Uh, Bob estimates that the equipment would generate cash flows of $20,000 each year. So buying equipment for $50,000 cash, it's gonna give us $20,000 a year in cash flow and it's gonna last three years. I'm no math wizard, but I can do the math. And I can say, okay, it's gonna bring in 60,000, three times 20. It's got a $50,000 uh, cost. Uh, obviously it's going to make money but the question is does it make enough money and when we consider the money it brings in three years from now isn't quite as valuable as the money we're spending today is it really worth it is the question we seek to answer here after three years bob estimates he would be done using the equipment and could sell it for a thousand dollars okay that's another relevant cash flow here bob's cost of capital is six percent we'll talk about that more in a minute but we can already solve problem a without talking about that it says compute the payback period this says how long will the investment take to pay back without considering the fact that a dollar in three years is worth less than a dollar today so all you do is you take the uh investment fifty thousand dollars and divide by the annual positive cash flows. So it's $50,000 upfront investment divided by $20,000 per year in positive cash flow coming back. The answer here is it takes 2.5 years for this investment to pay it for itself. And again, if you are contemplating between a bunch of different investments, well, how quickly you get paid back should be relevant to your decision. Uh, the longer it takes for an investment to pay back, the riskier it is. I'm not saying it's bad, but what I am saying is if it takes 20 years for an investment to pay off, um, I might be dead in 20 years. So that's a much higher risk than something that pays off in two years. Uh, so generally speaking, shorter payback periods are thought of as better or at least less risky. So that's a, a fairly straightforward question. The payback period for this is two and a half years. Uh, now we get to the more interesting calculations, in my opinion. The second one is the net present value. Now, I had mentioned this, Bob's cost of capital is 6%. In our class, I'm always going to give you a cost of capital or borrowing rate. Uh, this is 
an important number. There are modules, even courses in corporate finance on just getting to this number in an intro management accounting class. We'll just give you the number. Um, this is what I would call the discount rate or it's the amount at which Bob can borrow money. So he can get money at 6%. And what that means is if he's going to invest money, $50,000, he better beat 6%. He's got to do better than 6%. That's sort of a magic number. Now, again, where do we get the 6%? Maybe it's, it's Bob's best rate he can get from a bank when borrowing money. So presuming he has to borrow this $50,000, well, if he's going to buy the asset, he better do better than 6%. He better beat the interest. And, and it's more complex than that. But for now, just think of it that way. It's like the number, you, you've got to do better than 6%. You're not going to uh, do all this work for 0% return. So what's, what's the number you want to meet? For Bob, at least 6% is his go or no-go number. So let's see if he beats 6%. And what we have to do is we have to take the present value of all of the cash flows. So in year zero, in other words, time zero, Bob pays out $50,000. At the end of year one, because he doesn't get the $20,000 cash flow at the start, he gets it after working the year. For year one, his cash flows are $20,000. For year two, his cash flow is $20,000. And for year three, his cash flow is actually $21,000. So what we need to figure out is, do these positive cash flows, which is $61,000, does that outweigh the negative cash flow of $50,000 today? The $61,000 we're receiving over time, does that outweigh the $50,000 today? And a very nice way to do that is called net present value. So here we go. Uh, the year zero stuff, well, that is today. So the present value of $50,000 today is $50,000. There's no discounting needed. For year one, the formula here will be $20,000 divided by one plus the interest rate. In this case, the, the uh, uh, discount rate is 6%, one plus 6%. So one plus 0.06 raised to the power of whatever year it is, 1.06 to the one. So 20,000 divided by 1.06 to the one. I'm just gonna calculate that with my calculator. 2000 divided by 1.06, raised to the power of one is just 1.06, 18868, 18868. What this is telling us is that $20,000 in a year is worth $18,868 today. Let's see what $20,000 in two years is. It's $20,000 divided by 1.06 to the two, raised to the second power, 1.06 squared. I'm actually gonna have to change my calculator from standard to scientific, because I get to more powers of, and it's this button here, this xy button that'll come in handy so i hit this little thing in my windows calculator i hit scientific if you have a scientific calculator you should look for the x to the y button x to the power of y so twenty thousand dollars divided by 1.06 squared 1.06 raised to the power of two let's just do that 1.06 x to the y two 1.1236 okay so twenty thousand dollars divided by that number, 1.1236, gives me 17,800 actually, I'll round that up to 17,800. So again, the present value of $20,000 in two years is 17,800. Now 21,000 in three years, again, we're getting into uh, routine calculations, divided by 1.06 raised to the power of three. Uh, here we go, 1.06. Let's clear our memory. 1.06 raised to the power. So I hit the X to the Y. 3. I get 1.191016. I'll put that number in memory. 21,000 divided by that number I just calculated. 1.191016 gives me 17,632. 17,632. Okay, so I have all of my cash flows. Year zero, I'm paying out 50,000. Year one, 18,000 comes in. Year two, 17, and year three, 17. That's the present value of all of the future cash flows. 
all I do now is add them all together. This plus this plus this plus this equals a number. So here we go. Clear my, where's the clear button? Uh, negative 50. So 50,000 negative plus 18,868 plus 17,800 plus 17,632 equals four thousand three hundred dollars there is the present value of this investment so if it creates a positive present value the theory goes you should do it it's forty three hundred dollars more in your pocket uh, after considering the uh, uh time value of money you know the present value uh, of that uh, discount rate so in any event 4300 positive uh, this would be something that we should at least consider investing in. That's what net present value tells us. And of course, we can do this much more quickly in Excel. Just uh, uh, laying out the numbers as we've laid them out. We can take the present value of each one. So equals 50,000 negative divided by one plus our interest rate, 6%. Uh, raised to the power of zero uh, for the first one. And of course that's just 50,000 and we should be able to fill this over. I'm just gonna lock in my interest rate with putting dollar signs in front of it. And if I fill this over, you can see how much more quick this goes in Excel. And to get the net present value, these are all numbers that are familiar. So I'm going kind of quickly here. Now we just add them up and you can see we've arrived at the same number and we could do this even quicker in Excel using some of its other functions. But for now, I mean, we could just kind of do it that way in Excel and I, I think it does the job. Um, so that's the net present value. It generated a positive present value, whether we did in Excel or by hand of $4,300. On to the last one, and this is the most complex, the internal rate of return. It says, what is the true percentage of this investment? It's not 6%, it's more than 6%. How do I know it's more than 6%? Because it generated a positive return. The real return in this investment, when I made the investment, has to be more than 6%. So when you compute internal rate of return, you're computing a percentage. If it has a positive net present value, uh, the, present, the percentage will be higher than the cost of capital. If it has a negative net present value, the IRR, internal rate of return, will be lower than the net present value. So in this case, because we had a positive uh, net present value, we're expecting the internal rate of return to be more than six. Now here's how you do it, and it's kind of a nightmare to do. You have to, by trial and error, figure out what, make, what percentage makes our net present value zero. So rather than using 1.06, we'll try a higher number. So I'll do one by hand just to kind of show you the, the torturousness of all of this, if that's a word. Let me copy this down. So here, oh, what on earth just happened? I thought I copied that. I got audio filters for some reason. Uh, hold on, let's do this. Copy, Control C. Paste, control V, there we are, there we have it. So there's my cash flows, right? Zero, zero, minus 50, year one, 20, year two, 20, year three, 21. Now I'm gonna show you the, the calculations here. Uh, obviously the present value of the 50,000 is just 50, doesn't matter which rate we use, it's today's dollars. Uh, year one, 20,000, let's choose a different number that's higher. So let's choose I don't know, 9%, maybe we'll be closer with 9%. So actually let's choose 10%. It's a, it creates more, I don't know if it does create more even numbers, but anyway, one plus 0.1 raised to the power of one, 20,000 divided by one plus 0.1, that's 10% raised to the power of two and 20, 21,000, pardon me, divided by one plus 0.1, raised to the power of three. So let's just calculate that out. Uh, 20,000 divided by 1.1, raised to the power of one is just 1.1, 18,182, 18,182. 1.1 uh, raised to the power of two, 
squared is 1.21, so I can remember that. Uh, 20,000 divided by 1.21 is 16.529. No, 16.529, pardon me, no point there. 16.529. And last but not least, 1.1 raised to the third power. So I hit that Y to the X button, three, 1.331. So 21,000 divided by 1.331 gives us 15778157781578. Okay, and if I want a present value, I just add these all together and that gives me my present value just as we had done uh, up here, just as we had done previously. So 50,000, that's a negative plus 18182 plus 16529 plus 15 seven seven eight is 489 it's not zero so what i would have to do is okay well i know it's not six percent it's higher i know it's not ten percent it's got to be higher than this i would try eleven percent twelve percent until i got the exact number now if you're looking at this saying i don't want to do this trial and error thing 20 times to get the right number that's crazy you're right it is crazy and so the correct thing to do would be to do it in excel now i'll show you the trial and error way in excel and then i'll show you the easy way in Excel. So the trial and error way in Excel, we just change the interest rate, right? I have all these formulas linked through and I'm going to change the interest rate until I get a present value of zero. So 6%, no, 7%, no, 8%, no, 9%, no, we still have a positive present value, 10%. Okay, that's 488. That's the number we just calculated. 11%. Okay, now we're negative. Okay, so 10% is 488. 11% is negative. It's got to be somewhere in between 10 and 11%. Let's try 10.5. Well, we're getting close. 10.6. Uh, Okay, it's between 10.5 and 10.6. Looks like it's almost halfway, 10.55. And look at that, the net present value is zero. So through that trial and error, and you could do that by hand, but good Lord, what a nightmare, right? Calculating it over and over and over again. We've answered the question, the IRR of this investment was higher than 6% because of course it created a positive uh, net present value. The IRR of this investment was, what was it, 10.55? Yeah, 10.55%. But that's pretty sloppy. And if you looked at what I just did and thought, that's pretty sloppy, I think you'd be right. Because of course, this is something we have to do all the time. IRR is actually just a function in Excel. So you go equals IRR bracket, and then you just go through the cash flows. You go, these are my cash flows. <laughs> Close bracket, hit enter. And there it is. So, you know, I, I took you the long way around to get there. My suggestion is if you have a financial calculator or if you have a computer in front of you, the best way to compute IRR is just to use the internal function of either Excel or to use, if you have a financial calculator, use that. All right. That's it for this video. So the IRR here is 10%. We would say that's higher than the 6% that we required, higher than our 6% cost of capital. This is a worthy investment. A lot talked about in this video. I hope it was helpful to you. That's all for now. Talk to you soon. Bye for now, everybody.